Is it possible to add a second antenna wire to your existing NFED half-wave antenna? Well, I did. I currently had set up on my MCOM2 just a single wire doing NVIS, near vertical incident skywave antenna. But I needed one to do more long distance. I needed a sloper antenna. So I figured out a way to be able to run two wires off of one NFED half-wave antenna and keeping the integrity of my one coax cable going back to my rig. Well, how did I do it? Well, you're going to have to watch this video to find out. So if this is of interest to you, let's get started. Hey, this is MJ, call sign KW3KW, and welcome to another episode of Ham Radio Made Simple. I kind of took a pivot, a little bit of a pivot today, and wanted to do a follow-up on a previous video that I did. And if you haven't watched it, the link is in the description below. But I have a, a, a Chameleon MCOM2 that I use for near-vertical incident skywave antenna, which is referred to as Envis. And uh, I have the green wire, you know, uh, comes with it. Mine's the older version, which is the, the cylinder, uh, aluminum cylinder. So the newer versions today have this uh, type of box. And I'm going to tell you what I did with it. As, as part of the ham radio for prepping, I'm really trying to do directed calls, just not random calls, CQing out there. I'm specifically trying to do digital directed calls to people that I know. And that's why I set this whole configuration up, because what I just did allows me to do, and it's a lot simpler for me to do directed calls to people I'm trying to reach, my fellow ham operators that we practice a lot with and talk. So if you're getting value from any of these videos, go ahead and hit the like and the subscribe button. And I just wanted to give a shout out and thank you to all of those who take the time to post a comment saying that, you know, thank me for doing these videos. Because I'll tell you what, you know, it, it gets hard doing these. It takes a lot of time. Um, and I'm not profiting from these things. But uh, my po most important thing is that people walk away that are new to this, uh, you know, endeavor, ham radio. And I can shorten the learning curve. I can make it easier, and you don't have to go to 10 other videos to find information. So again, thank you. So I'm going to show you my setup outside of my shack. I'm going to talk about the materials required to make this work. I'm going to go through the results uh, using uh, Whisper, both on the Envis and the Sloper antenna, and just a quick summary. So what's my setup outside? Well, my pole that I have my UHF VHF antennas on happens to be a, a flagpole that's retractable. And so it actually fits in a hole because you live in a homeowner's association, you know, requirements. They don't allow this stuff. Well, I can pull that thing out of the ground in an instant if they ask me to. But anyhow, so far they haven't asked me to because it's pretty stealth. I took a box, waterproof box, painted it black, have a toggle switch, which I'll break all this down. But I want you to pay attention to the bottom underneath the box, two wires. The green wire is my Envis. And now my uh, uh, black wire is for my sloper. Typically, this would get direct, uh, connected to the to the wing nut on top of the transformer on the uh, MCOM2. What I did is I bought two of these switches, and this is a different view that you can see. And I have this is where my MCOM uh, is sitting, and now I painted it brown, and uh, you know tried to make it as stealth as possible. People walk by here all the time and don't even notice any of this because it's not. A different color kind of blends in with the trees in the woods so i take my antenna wire to the on uh, part of the toggle and i take my transformer wire and put it to the off section now there's two transformer wires coming down and goes on right on here under the wing nut where this is where where the antenna this one wire would have gone here originally now i've got two wires coming out of the box going in here where each of these wires are going to each of the toggles does that make sense so let's talk about my setup outside. You can kind of get an idea of what I'm trying to do here. This is my NVIS 10 foot, and I'm running it out over to the left from what you see here as the retractable flagpole. This is about like, you know, nine feet to 10 feet tall. Now up in the trees, I run another wire. This is the black wire. You can kind of see the wire a little bit here and it, and it goes up and it goes up into the trees. And that's my sloper wire. And again, I prefer black. If you can always get black, get it. Um, I mean, the green will do, but the black doesn't reflect any light. And it's, again, more, less noticeable, more stealth. So this is from one angle. Now, if we're taking my Envis and we're looking at it running again, running out here, this is that same wire. Uh, you know, I put it through some insulators and then I'm going to do a hard pivot at this tree and I'm, and I'm going to turn left at 90 degree angle. And from this position, you can actually look back toward that tree. This tree is over here. 
And so what I'm trying to do is get it so that um, I can stop right here and I use on the, if you can see right in here, I, I apologize, but it's kind of small, but right in here is the, uh, the fiberglass little circle at the end of the uh, MCOM wire. And I take a paracord, not paracord, excuse me, I take bungee rope. I take bungee rope, and a link will be in the description below, versus paracord. And the reason I use that is because this thing really stretches. So as the trees blow back and forth, instead of putting stress on the wire and going back here and pulling on uh, the connection up in here, this will stretch back and forth, and it takes all the tension off over here. So just a way, again, I do the same thing up in the tree over there. When those trees move back and forth, this thing will stretch like 100%. It's amazing stuff. So if we take the first wire, that's the green, that's my 10-foot high near vertical incident sky wave antenna. I run it in a parallel L pattern. I'm finding that it's omnidirectional, and it's designed for a shorter distance, obviously, particularly in the 40 and 80 meters. That's where I'm focusing on, where I don't want to go DXing. I want to reduce the skip zone so that I can hit people closer to me and not pass over them. So this is a perfect setup for regional coverage. But I don't want to give up the distance at the same time. So that's where the second wire comes in, and it's black. And that one's a 35-foot high sloper, omnidirectional. However, I notice that it favors the direction toward the transformer. So from the point up in the tree, back to the flagpole, in that direction, I can go some extraordinary distances. So I'll talk more about it when we get to, to the Whisper uh, maps. So the material it takes to build this stuff is pretty easy. Go to Amazon, link is in the description below. 11 bucks, paint it. If you, that way no one sees it. Black, brown, camo, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can get a pair of switches right in here for another eight bucks, so that's $19, $20 that goes on there. And these are you know marine waterproof. They work really well. I've had that thing up for quite a while now. Um, the other thing you have to do is buy an extra wire. Now, I bought a, mine, I got it black. I'm not sure if they still have it today, but uh, you might check. But I got the extra wire for $67 that exactly goes with the MCOM2. Uh, so same length as the other wire, which makes it really simple. So strongly suggest doing that. So right now you got maybe $100 into it. But here's the thing. You don't have to set up an extra uh, coax cable and uh, do all, all the grounding, you know, set up extra, uh, you know, uh, lightning uh, protection devices in there. All that's done. I'm sharing everything. It's simple, it's easy to, to, to install, and it's flexible, I can change it. But there's going to be the, the, the people out there that want to do it themselves, their own wire, go ahead, bulk wire. Just make sure it's flexible and uh, make sure it matches the other wire. Now, they're never on at the same time. So well, essentially what I do is I took a paint uh, roller uh, st a handle stick. You know, I think it's like five feet long or whatever it is. And I painted this thing white. This is what we use for painting, for example. You can use it as a broom handle stick, too. It screws into that, too. But I painted this white so at night when it's up against the black and I put my flashlight on it, I can see if I'm getting over the, the dongle switches or not. So I just use something like that, and it's either on, off, or off, on. And obviously, the green wire, like I said, goes over to here, and the black wire comes up here. And the reason I did that is the sloper's the taller wire, so that's at the top. The envis is, is the lower wire that's at the bottom. So it makes it simple so I don't ever forget which wire goes to what. And you can buy, if you put this up eight, higher than, you know, uh, 8 to 10 feet, then what you can do is uh, go to Amazon. It's about $10, $11. They have the same type of poles that are out there. You know, it screws onto a, a paint roller, for example. But it's, it's uh, retractable. It, you can extend it out even further. So if you take yours up higher, this is something you might want to use. This was already laying around the house. It was free. So when we look at our 5-watt Whisper map using my sloper at 20 meters, and I ran this for 10 minutes, I was quite impressed being able to go all over the place, you know, into Europe, uh, up into Canada, hitting the West Coast. Really, really nice. Nice results on that with the sloper at 35 feet high. Compared to the Envis on 20 meters, uh, I still got into Europe pretty well, but I didn't go as far out west, didn't go up into Canada, and I didn't go uh, down south this far, which was interesting. But again, I'll explain that in a second. Now, if we look at the sloper at 40 meters, this is where I want to go out to the West Coast. This is 10 minutes. I ran this thing longer, but then it gets so much information on the map, it becomes overwhelming to try to distinguish which, what's around you. But I was hitting New Zealand, Australia, uh, uh, South Africa, Antarctic, 
uh, on the sloper at 40 meters as well, well all me, uh, up to the border of the Ukraine, Moldova, right outside of that, uh, on the other side of it. So I was super thrilled on the results that I was getting on the sloper at 40 meters. But at the same time, my goal was to hit regional around me. And with the Envis at 40 meters, yeah, it went a little bit over into Europe, but this, it was more tightly packed around in here. So, for example, trying to reach my friend, uh, friend Jim, uh, KO4UGF, uh, he's in the Charlotte area, and I'm in Raleigh area. Uh, on this one, man, I'm getting like, you know, plus 7, plus 8 dB. Um, whereas if I was trying to reach Paul, he's over more in, I think, the, uh, uh, the Austin area. And uh, he's uh, KI5MIV. And I need to use not this one, but I need to go to the sloper. I can reach both, both of them on this one, but I reach Jim extremely well in the, in the Charlotte area from Raleigh on this one. So they have their purposes, and it's so easy to switch. And so in summary, add an extra wire. And, and I'm telling you what, you just leverage your investment. So you can have one end-fed antenna, but you have multiple wires with the box, and you can get different outcomes. You can change your wires, directions anytime you want. And if you're looking for different outcomes on that, you can change the height. But at the same time, everything's still connected to your rig. Very simple to do. So easy to switch, simple to set up. So hopefully um, you've enjoyed what I've been doing here and you're going to want to know what I'm doing next. And the next video is uh, Vara AC. And I wasn't sure what I wanted to do after that, but one of the uh, subscribers reached out and said, hey, MJ, could you do one on Vara FM? So, yep, after Vara AC, Vara FM will come in. And I'm open to suggestions. So, listen, I listen to what you guys are, the new guys that are out there that want to learn something, especially if you're doing, trying to do anything around the digital modes for a little bit longer let me know and I'll be uh, glad to try to do something or uh, reach out to me and I've contacted a lot of people, work with them. I'll send my documentation. I have screen prints on everything that you can think that's out there and all these different digital setups. Uh, and I send them out because it helps people be able to do it quicker and faster. So I appreciate those that who are uh, going ahead, continuing hitting the like, the subscribe and doing those comments. Again, thank you so much. So this is Ham Radio Made Simple. MJ, call sign KW3KW. Thanking you for watching this video, and to, until next time, out.